I got the privilege of competing at another blacksmithing challenge at Arc Valley in something called the Black Box Challenge. Basically, an item is forged and it's put into a box with armholes cut out of it. And you don't get to see the item, you only get to feel it. You get an initial feel of one minute and then two 30 second refills. And whoever makes the closest replica to the item wins. James Bond had won the previous challenge and was judging this one. And competing with me that day were Darren George and Curtis Peterson. When I felt the item in the box, I knew right away that I was feeling a really big spoon. And when I saw the bar that we were gonna make it out of, I knew right away that I wasn't sure how much material I needed to spread to make a spoon that big. And so my strategy was to start making the, the, the scoop first and see how that would go, and then isolate the material later after I knew that I had enough. All right, well, looks like it's a big spoon. So after spreading out the spoon, uh, I isolated the material of the scoop, and then I isolated some more material for the spade section after the scoop, and I also kept filing the scoop hot to refine the shape. Putting the spade part on there was tricky, uh, lining everything up with the edge of the anvil. And later I used a guillotine tool, uh, needing to put it in a vise because it didn't fit in my anvil. And the guillotine tool made it much easier, but I already had a pretty good start. I had to stand on a box in order to get high enough above the vise in order to, to use the guillotine tool.
improve with what I got so far. Then I had to really move some metal to draw out the skinny part uh, of the handle. I proportioned it out square and then I knocked the corners off uh, to go to an octagon and then knocked those corners off, taking it to a round. Left is make a pretty good time, so I'm pretty excited that it's going to work out. Sometimes we're here, sometimes we're there, I isolated what would become the thicker part of the handle, really the handle part of the handle. And it was uh, too wide, so I had to draw it out a little. I also cut some material off because I just felt like it, there was too much there. left so uh, things are moving along pretty well uh, I still have to do the little curly cue and the little loop for the handle and then just clean and refine everything to make it as nice as it can be so hope it works out well Thank you. 
right, so I, got, I guess I got about 20 minutes left. Still working on the curly cue on the end of the handle. And uh, I got the proportions right, but we'll see. The last little bit uh, was drawing out a little tail and curly cue to make the ring to hang it up. And this was kind of a fight because it was pretty difficult to hold the piece at that time. Didn't really have, didn't have the best tongs to use. And, uh, and I had too much material, so I needed to cut it off again. And this, at this point, I felt way ahead, but after fighting the ring, it took longer than I thought. It, it was like my lead was gone, but I did uh, use some of that time to check and straighten and file and refine the finished spoon. And it was a, a good, I had a good feeling that I might actually win this one. All right, I got about 15 minutes, I'm still fighting the curly cue, still straighten everything up. I got. And then came the judgment. All right, we're done. Real close, yeah. Replace just like that. Just here's the model piece. There's first place. Oh no first way! Place. I have won. You did. <laughs> I finally won. Yes. <laughs> and I, I've got a couple ideas for the next one, so awesome. I've been thinking about it for a while. Awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. Awesome. I already have a challenge in mind for what I'll make, have the boys make next, something a little sentimental to me because it was the very first thing that I ever forged. And uh, so stay tuned for that next video where I build the project for the next challenge, and then the one following that where they actually compete and I get to be the judge. That, uh, 
It was a lot tougher. I started into that deal. I thought, ah, oh, this is going to take an hour. <laughs> it was, it was tough. Lots of this one, spoon shape, the spoon size is the closest. And this little curtain little, little right is, is the right direction. And his little, whatever that little thing he is called is probably the closest. Yeah, you got nice crisp corners on him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I wanted them, I wanted them to be crisp, and they, they were crisp for a while, and then just one hammer blow, and then they weren't. That was the neat thing about that. We started out with 12 inches. That's what I cut off, and that deal measured. Started with 12. Well, I cut three 16. off. Every, those are all. Super really close. close. I can't believe how close you guys got. Yeah, the, uh, I don't know what y'all ended up cutting off, but I cut this, and then I cut my cut my loop a little bit because I thought it was way too big, which it is way too big. I don't like it. Okay, and you can tell mine's just heavier. It's, yeah, it's heavier here. Mm -hmm. It's a colonial tasting spoon. Is, is <laughs> what is what I. That's what it is. Okay. And the. The pictures that I was going for, and I missed by a long shot. Yeah, I was like, I'm never going to get it that big of a spoon. Like, yeah. did he upset it first? Or I started working with it with the spoon out of it because I was afraid to it'd get too thin and it'd eat, right. eat it down, and then it would split on me or something. And isolated, I guess. Bill's didn't isolate enough. <laughs> I, uh, it took me probably, and I started, well, I'll tell you my mode of process. I started with mine. I did just like Darren did and Curtis did, and kind of isolated where your spoon started. Kind of got this back here, and then there's a little video that I watched about how to help make those spoons rounder, and you did it, and you tapered that, before, after you isolated, you tapered the tip, and and Try that, to make it more rounder. Yes, before you started spreading it. And I didn't see if anybody else did that. Um, Darren had uh, his corners off, which was also a good idea. Yeah. Um, it's a neat deal. There's a video on how to make that spoon. I just I couldn't figure out in my head how the hell we were going to make make something that wide into that big of a spoon. Ooh, well, ooh. and I didn't get mine. Yeah. As wide as what I wanted so to. Did, how much of this did you file off? Very, not very much. Not very much. All I did was just make it round. I had a long corner there, and then I had these heels. I had one heel that was long, but the rest I got of them too thin, and then it started cracking all over the place. There's that guy that did those spoons. He said those spoons are three inches wide. They're the same stuff we did. And a young kid. It seems to be. Yeah, he's. Uh, Action animal. Yep. What I have been doing, or at least what I think I'm doing wrong, and so I'll lay my stock, yeah. and you get your first one here, and then I'll turn my deal over. Well, I can't see, and I've, and I've been trying to do it this way, and I overreach or underreach or hit, and I watch that kid, and he comes over here to the side. Well, you're still a little bit blind, but but he turned his hammer, and I saw you do that. Turned his hammer a whole bunch and hit a lot of times right there. Um, and he didn't worry if it got out of whack. If it did, he had, so he had his isolated piece out here and he said, it's okay. I've, I've overstruck or I've understruck. And so he'd get that off him and get that kind of neck down, then he'd turn and he'd get, he just quenched just the end of that where he didn't distort that end. And would drive those shoulders back in and he explained, he said, well, now see this one's thicker. We've got to put that material back over here and he'd do like that. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty neat. Yeah. Yep, Axe yeah. Anvil, yep, I, I know that guy. He's, he does a lot of colonial stuff. Yes. Did he make this set yes. to? That guy that runs that Axe and Anvil deal, uh, had a kid that's a friend of his, and this kid looks like he's about 19 years old. Just got done with an internship at Anderson Forge in yeah. Anderson Forge. Georgia, I think. Um, and that kid just whipped one out. Well, there's a lot of editing. Looked like he whipped one out. 
Uh, but uh, it was really neat. And and then the picture that that this uh, axe and anvil guy does um, is what I modeled this off of or tried to. Uh, it's pretty neat though. I just thought it was, I just thought it was something we haven't done yet. Yeah, he does. He does some neat stuff. Like he did like a door handle thing that I yes. watched one time. It's a like colonial, yeah. and then his colonial nail header thing, and yeah. like he does like period stuff. Like I, he had a book he was looking a lot of the stuff up in, but it was it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So God bless you, and thank you for watching.